please take a moment to read this legal disclaimer, especially bullet number one. Thank you. When I was 11 years old, growing up in a white upper-class family, I saw a funeral on TV that would change the way I understood my place in the world. Let me be clear, it wasn't because this death was of a person that I knew and felt sad. It was the opposite, I was in awe of the pomp and circumstance on global display for this princess who was a sad victim of unfortunate circumstances. That level of stardom and martyrdom inspired me to begin thinking about the long game. I wanted to be just like her. So I began practicing my victimhood and manipulation skills early on my father, figure out which heartstrings to pull to get what I wanted until I no longer needed him. Then I moved on to the next man I could find to be manipulated, and then on to another. With each man I picked and wrapped around my finger, provided me with stepping stones that allowed me access to disposable people and resources I needed to use in my quest for global stardom. How is it that the word victim signifies something so negative? Our culture today defines victim as suffering under a circumstance or condition. My hope is that my truth convinces and conceals the superficiality of my facade. I feel that I am better than everyone and should be crowned queen of the world. And on this episode of Idiotypes, I speak with two native New York entrepreneurs to find out why they don't admire me in creating a new stereotype for the word victim by turning it into a viable profitable grift. Let's welcome my guests for today's episode, Bethany Frankel and the Royal Grift. Hello. As a daughter, a mother and your sister, this is a safe space to talk about my awesomeness. And I don't want to shy away from something that I have an opinion on. If I'm hearing moms talk about it, if uh, I want you to know that I don't know that much about her. I mean, don't worry, I'll fill you in. I know what I read in the headlines and I know that, you know, the Daily Mail and the Post is always writing uh, negative things that the Piers Morgans and the Megyn Kelly are always sort of on one side. I had Megyn Kelly on my last show and it was clear that she was jealous of me being more famous and richer than she will ever be. I married a prince and it was challenging for her to meet me on that level. So I can see why that media is putting out misinformation. Um, That's not what I thought. She actually called you out for being a control freak and also setting a bad example for creating division. It's become oddly like a political thing. Oh, for sure. I don't see it as a political thing. I pay a lot of money to Sunflower Stinks to blackmail mainstream media, as well as their famous A-list clients to push out my propaganda and bully people into silence who are not going along with my narrative. I have worked really hard on building this false narrative around my brand. I have been at it for like five years now. It's become oddly like a political thing. Yes and no. The mainstream media is predominantly left-leaning and Sunflower Stinks has their connections and main relationships with the major liberal media outlets. So while it may appear to be political, it's just that those that are not influenced by Sunflower Stinks are seen as the conservative side. Yes. My husband pays a lot of money to Sunflower Stinks to push out my hourly propaganda. The bot army I have in place suppresses voices and helps to keep my truth trending on Twitter. The purpose of this podcast is to control those who have gone rogue and is about getting the last word in. And this is why she needs to be locked up and away from children. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me like that there are party lines on an individual, especially someone who's not a politician. Bethany, you need to understand that this is part of the long game. It is why this woman is taking advantage, playing a victim and winning sympathy of many stupid and ignorant people in this country. They actually believe that she's a dark skinned black woman who has faced horrific adversity and discrimination her entire life. She is polarizing by design and on purpose. Racism is real in this country and all over the world. Undeniable. Oh, I agree. But it's the liberal media and these progressives who are the main contributors to keeping racism alive by calling everyone racist if they don't agree with their way of thinking. You could say you don't like chocolate ice cream and... That's so racist. You see what I mean? Undeniable. Um, depression, mental illness, um, homophobia, Israeli. Don't you see? I am also on the 
LGBTQIA XYZ123 bandwagon? It's why I pull at the heartstrings on all those trendy social issues. I am certain one of my false narratives will pay off. I just need to silence those who tell the truth long enough so I can get into that White House. Then I can pass my bill to become queen of the world. There are issues that are real that you can have an opinion on a topic and not be ignoring those. Bethany, so you're seriously not giving her the benefit of the doubt, are you? I knew you believed me. The royal grift is just a middle-aged blue woman who wishes she was the one that married my husband. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Isn't it the whitest, most aristocratic... R royal family? It like was great when I entered that family because I gave birth and am now leading a modern movement called victimhood. I am a role model to young women of color. I am showing them that mediocrity should be rewarded the best in life. All they have to do is play a victim and the world is theirs, well it actually is my world, but they can pretend that they are me. When I walked into that church, it was showtime and all eyes were on only me. Whatever, I wasn't there. So whatever she experienced or fabricated in her head. So whatever she experienced, let's just say that that was totally real. It now, is my truth, and you would be racist if you did not believe me. Across the board, press seems to feel that there was a lot embellished in other areas. Um, Embellish is too polite. Let's call it what it is. Lies. Nothing but lies. There are many discrepancies. You had a secret wedding, but then... The, the, the... Where is my husband? Yes, your highness, I am coming. You rang? Call my lawyer. I feel like raising another lawsuit with your money. Yes, princess, right away. It is her husband who she loves. I don't believe that she loves him. She's 100% has used him. What is it that bothers you so much? Like, why do you hate her? Hate's a very strong word. I don't like this princess because of her bad behavior. It's not okay to purposely lie knowing that its intention is designed to hurt people or get revenge because they didn't get what they want or their way. I also do not like the hypocrisy and the holier-than-thou attitude. She's not better than us. She was given so many opportunities and took them all for granted and is still whining about it. So... You know, it's hard to like someone when they are constantly complaining and ungrateful for the blessings that they currently have. Oh, that's interesting. Victimhood is very much a profitable business. Just ask the liberal progressive Democrats under the age 40. This is how we take a stand. People take a stand for what they believe in. People who take a stand because it is trendy and the end thing to do because it's keeping you relevant is why we have such an issue. It's not okay to lie and hurt people so you can get ahead without any consequences. I should be able to pick what I want to do. My husband's family wanted to stick to traditions that did not allow me to be the spotlight. Why can't I walk in front of the queen? Don't you see how racist this is? Me, a woman of color, told to walk behind the queen? It's okay to have your own podcast and want to make money, want to be a capitalist, making hundreds of millions of dollars on Spotify, on Netflix. You know, go for the American dream. Leave the Brits, go for the American dream. You want to be friends with famous people. You weren't allowed to go out. You weren't allowed to take designer goods. Live your life. You were on a game show holding a briefcase, and then you were on a show that wasn't widely known. I had never seen it or really heard of it. Me neither. You know, that, that, that's, every little girl wants to be a princess. But I am a princess. It's like, who cares? Like, great, go for yours, go all the way. You know what I think? People don't like you because you're a liar and talk down to people. You also are a bully and think you're better than everyone who has helped you get to where you are today. I think she's sanctimonious. Oh, 100%, definitely. What? I am sitting right here. I can hear you. Uh, I had enough. I can't listen to this anymore. I'm out. Do you want to hear the story of how I was not allowed to profit when I had to cut ribbons and smile as a working royal? In every single interview you do, you are talking in some nuanced subtext or slightly direct way about the royal family. Let it go, Elsa. Move forward. Create change in the future. I can't believe they just walked out.
I was not finished talking. Did they not see me? Or hear my voice? <coughs> Can you please stop sneaking up on me like that? Hello. I'm H.G. Tudor. Yeah, I know. You say it every time. You pop up out of nowhere. Narcissists hate attention going elsewhere. It wounds us. I am not a narcissist, but oddly it seems like you see me. Please continue. No fuel is being provided to us, fuel being our lifeblood, and the fact that attention is on somebody else signals to us that we're not important, that we don't matter. I know. Some people just don't recognize when they are in the presence of greatness. They don't know what they are talking about. They are so jealous of me. It causes the narcissist to feel weak, vulnerable, unimportant. And the narcissism ignites to compel the narcissist to behave in a particular way to ensure that that threat to control posed by the ignoring the narcissist is dealt with. I'll show them who is in charge. Stay tuned. HG? Where did you go?